Hello, my lovely human beings. It's Magda K and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, well, I'm really happy to get to know you. If you're coming back, thank you so much for being part of this community. So today I want to answer a question. And the question is, I'm in love with him, but he's in a relationship. Should I tell him how I feel? So a few days ago, I was participating in an online tantric summit. And that question was asked in one of the sessions. The facilitator responded to this question and I absolutely hated what she said. Now, I don't really know her, but I felt like this is just really unhealthy and dangerous advice to be giving people. So I decided to make this video to share with you what my advice would be. So this is a situation that I've been in many times. I would assume you probably have too. So there is someone who is in a relationship, so they're not available and we develop the feelings. And what do we do about those feelings? Do we tell him about it or do we just keep it in? So this is what I want to share with you in this video. So first thing I want to share, and look, this can be a little challenging, maybe a little direct, but you're here because you want to have the most fulfilling intimate life, like the highest quality relationships. And a part of this is, you know, us being able to face some of our patterns and actually name it for what it is. So something that's, in my opinion, very important to understand is what love actually is. Because what this woman shared in her question was specifically, she said, I am in love with a man who is in a relationship. She specifically used the phrase that she is in love. And something I want to just bring up to the surface is the fact that being in love is mutual. Like you cannot be in love with someone if there is no relationship. So from her question where she's asking, should I tell him how I feel? That implies that there's no connection, that it's not mutual. It hasn't been shared. So it's something that she is feeling. And in a way, he's most likely absolutely unaware of it, or at least it hasn't been voiced out. It hasn't been acted on. Well, that means it's not mutual. It means that this, that she has feelings for him, but they don't have connection. Like, kind of by definition, you cannot be in love with someone if you haven't experienced intimacy together. Because then the question is, what are you in love with? So the first thing is to understand is that to be in love requires reciprocity. In fact, falling in love is a process. You don't just meet someone and right away fall in love with with them because we fall in love with someone based on how we feel in their presence, based on the emotions and experiences that we share. So it's just like trust, right? You're not meant to meet someone and within the first five minutes, just trust someone. Trust needs to be and it is earned. If it's not earned, you're just naive, but it's not actual trust. But it's two different, like, you know, feelings, two different states. Trusting someone being naive are two very different things. And it's the same here. To fall in love with someone, to be in love with someone, it's a process. It's something we develop through interaction. So if you don't have these interactions, you cannot be in love. What you are is you may be infatuated. You may, you may be developing attachment, but this isn't actually being in love. And another thing that is very, very important here to understand is that if you say that you are, you are in love with someone and it has nothing to do with how this person treats you or who this person really is towards you, how they make you feel, how you feel in their presence, what you say is that you're in love with someone and then if you get to know them and this guy turns out to be like abusive, emotionally neglect to cross your boundary, force you things like he may even like verbally or physically abuse you, right? And you're like, oh, I will still be in love with this person. You're not meant to be in love with someone who harms you. Again, that's what I was um, saying just now that it needs to be earned. Like we, we fall in love over time. 
based on how this person is treating you. So if you're falling in love, as you say, with someone where there's no reciprocity, you're saying that that reciprocity doesn't matter, that you are available to fall in love with someone who may potentially absolutely mistreat you. And this is something we have to be very mindful of because again, this isn't love, that is codependency, people pleasing, and this is something quite common for people with the anxious attachment style. Now, I'm talking about it also from experience because that is the attachment style that I tend to feel most often. So again, I've been there, I have felt it. I was in love with men who were in a relationship or, you know, I've been in love with men who didn't even know me, didn't even know my name. But again, we're not really in love. Another thing I wanna um, speak to is what love actually is. Because very often we say like, oh, I'm in love with this person, but it hurts so much because it's not reciprocated or because he doesn't treat me right or, well, he's not available, whatever is the reason, but there is this element of pain that comes with loving this person. And the truth is that love is not painful. Love as an emotion is a positive one. It's not a negative one. So love is linked to ecstasy, pleasure, happiness, joy. Like if you look at the, at the list of emotions and we kind of group them into main emotions, love is a positive one. It's not a negative emotion. Love has nothing to do with sadness, has nothing to do with feeling abundant. Again, sadness, abandonment, feeling like your needs are not being met, um, all of that, that comes from abandoning yourself right from codependency from self-sacrifice this is what causes negative and painful emotions but love on its own is a very positive emotion so if you're feeling pain right if if like you say you're in love with him and it may be difficult and painful because he is in a relationship if there is an element of pain pain doesn't come from love it comes from other way that you're connecting to this guy and what happens in most cases like this is that again it's not actual love you may develop feeling you may the feelings um you may develop attraction right it can be infatuation but that is usually linked to some old story to some old trauma right and this part of you your inner child basically recognizes the dynamic and what the inner child does is that it really wants to repeat the past because it hopes that this time it's gonna get it right. This is why we end up in the same relationships, we end up dating the same people, we end up repeating the same patterns, because that wounded, broken part of ourselves is hoping that if I can just get one more chance, this time I will get it right, this time I will be loved, this time I will be pretty enough, I will be good enough, whatever it is, but this time I will get what I desire. I will do better to get what I desire. Now we all know that doesn't really work like this because if you didn't receive love or attention in childhood, it wasn't because you were not good enough. It's not because you didn't do something that you should have. You were a child. And so trying to win these things in adulthood doesn't work. But again, if you find yourself so in the love, as you say, with someone where it's not reciprocated. I really want you to just look at the patterns that you may be repeating in your life because that's not real love, it's something different. And it's great if you could look at it because that's an opportunity to heal an old pattern. Now, my love, let's actually talk specifically what to do because she did ask, should I tell him how I feel? So let's look at the logistics. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you would like more. So now, the logistics. Should she tell him how she feels about him? So there's a few things I will say here. The first one is that he may be in an open relationship. So I, you know, spent a few years of my life relating in an open way and I'm, open for people being open so this may be the case so if you are really attracted to someone who is in a relationship but here is a big but or end 
and you are comfortable relating in an open way, meaning that you're okay with him having his main partner and then dating you. If this is the dynamic that you are okay with, only then ask him just first check in. It's like, hey, are you guys in an open relationship? Like, it's just like a neutral question. Are you guys in an open relationship? If he says no, okay, let it go. If he says yes, great. Then the next thing you want to ask about is the rules and agreements that they have. Understand how it works, right? Is he, can he be seeing other women? Like, is there space there right now? So just get some like feel of how they do it. You don't need all the details right now, just a bit of a feel if there is space specifically for you. Then you get to tell him, listen, I am very attracted to you. If you're interested, I would love to go out on a date with you, or I would love to see if there's a connection between us, right? So this is when you get to bring it up again, if they are open and two, if you are okay, relating with an open couple, that is super important. And I say this because at the very beginning, when I was exploring open relationships, I did not do it in the most conscious way. And I, I speak about it, um, on this channel. Um, so like my first experiences, I was like, kind of hoping that he would leave his main partner from me. So it wasn't very nice for me, the intentions that I had for that. Um, so I would just say, be very honest with yourself. Are you hoping that if they're open and you join the relationship, that maybe he will choose you over her again? That's not pleasant. Let's not do it. So this is the first thing. Now, the second thing I will tell you that for me, it's absolutely okay to do is to tell him how you feel in the form of a compliment. So I know that some people disagree here and some people believe that telling someone compliments that someone is good looking or that you're attracted to them, that that crosses their boundaries. I have different point of view, you know, from my experience in life and not just professionally, but personally, you know, I mean, we are all full of insecurities. Like we probably all feel that we're not attractive enough, that people don't really like us, that we're too much or too little. So I am a huge fan of giving people compliments because this is just something that helps us believe in ourselves and have a stronger, healthier self-esteem and just feel good about ourselves. So I think it's absolutely okay to give a compliment. So the way I would actually personally uh, do, like what I would do in that situation specifically, is I would tell him this as a compliment, meaning I would just tell him, hey, I think you're very attractive or I really like you. I think you're a handsome man. I really like when you do this. This is very impressive. I am very attracted to you, right? So I would say it in a way that he receives a compliment. That means that I am not saying this to get something back. So I'm not saying, hey, I am attracted to you. Are you attracted to me? I'm also not saying I'm attracted to you and then waiting, okay, are you gonna do anything about that? Then it's not a compliment, then it's an agenda. That's me manipulating to get something back from him. And that's not nice and that's not really how you wanna do this. So you just give him a compliment. I think, again, even if someone is in a relationship, I personally believe that giving someone a compliment is absolutely fine as long as it doesn't come with a plan on how you can now start hitting on this guy and potentially steal him from a woman. And that takes me to the third aspect here of what to do or in fact what not to do. So throughout my experience with open relating and also not openly relating, but being in a monogamous relationship, um, I got to be on both ends. I got to do a few things that, to be honest, I am not very proud of. Like I mentioned, you know, engaging with a man who was in an open relationship while deep down I was hoping that he would leave her for me. That is not nice. Um, I So I wasn't always fully honest. And then I had, you know, I got to experience this myself when my friend uh, actually made a move on my boyfriend and they had a bit of a connection. And that really sucks to be on the receiving end of this. And I had like weird situation here and there. It wasn't just these two, um, but something that I decided 
is that I do not want to do to another woman something that I would not like done to me. So I want to treat women the way I want to be treated. That means that if I like a guy and he is in a relationship, I am not going to do anything that could potentially break them apart. Just because if it was me with a guy, I would not want any woman, you know, make a move on my man. I would not feel good about it. So for the woman who asked that question, again, my advice would be don't do anything that you wouldn't like if you were the girlfriend. You can call it karma, you can call it being in integrity, whatever it is, but I've, over the years, I've been really learning the power of sisterhood. It's amazing how women are fast to choose a man over another woman. How easily we assume, no, she, she must be horrible, right? Like if the relationship, let's say, is falling apart, it's her fault. She must be horrible and here I am, this amazing woman, and he will be so in love because he's been waiting for someone like me. Like all these stories that we tell ourselves, putting a woman down and putting him on the pedestal because we want him stabbing each other in the back like we're horrible at this i mean as in we're really good at this which makes it really horrible um so something that i really truly believe in and i promote and try to inspire women to own more is the power of sisterhood don't be so fast to do something nasty to another woman because first of all it's really not nice if you've ever been on the receiving end of this it just feels horrible but like also, you know, if you treat other women like this, don't be surprised when that comes back to you. So I don't want, you know, any woman to, you know, hit on my man and be cheated on. So I'm not gonna do it myself. So this is my advice. If I was asked this question, this would be the answer that this woman would have received. And I'm actually curious, what do you think about it? And what would be your advice to this question? If you were asked, you know, I like this guy, I'm in love with him, but he's in a relationship, what should I do? What would be your advice? So make sure to comment under this video so I can read that. And again, my love, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you found value in this, that it gave you some inspiration or maybe, you know, some food for thought, how you would deal uh, in the situation like this. Maybe you're in it right now yourself. And look, I understand that when we develop feelings for someone, it's not always easy, but these are the moments that define us, define who we are and what we stand for. So darling, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, please comment, please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Really, this is like the biggest reward I get for making these videos. So when I see your comments, when I see your likes, just like makes me super, super happy. So it would be amazing if you could just take a few seconds, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment for me um, below. And if you would like to connect even more, then follow me on Instagram. I practically share every day. I give some insights into my personal life as well. So if you want to get to know me better, this is the best place to do that. Again, my love, thank you so much. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.